My name is Mark Rondo. I have the honor of being one of the associate pastors here at Life Church, and I also have the honor to bring you the word this morning. I'm super excited about it because uh, I like talking. And when it's meaningful, it's even better, right? I'm excited. We're actually in week number two of our series called Simply Christmas. And it is just that, Simply Christmas. And uh, I have the honor of speaking about a man today, but I thought, you know what, before I jump into this guy, we're going to look at one of the most important fathers in history. But I thought, man, what would it look like if we looked at some of the quotes that fathers use today? Or maybe you've heard your father say. My favorite one was, uh, go ask your mother. <laughs> Anybody know that one? Yeah. Do I look like I'm made of money? <laughs> I thought so. Don't we have a tree? I was not sleeping. I was watching the game. Hmm? We're not lost. No, we're not there yet. <laughs> Don't make me stop this car. Those three are very evident in my life. And the last one... I brought you into this world, I can take you out. That's a not amen moment. We're going to look at a guy named Joseph today. Last week, Pastor Tim did an awesome job talking about Mary and the surrender that was involved with her life. We're going to talk about Joseph today and the trust that he had. So today we're going to talk about trust issues. I'm going to try and put a positive swing on this, though. <laughs> and here's the thing. I looked in Scripture to find a quote from one of the most prominent fathers in history. And guess how many quotes I could find from Joseph? Zero. The God don't talk. Well, I'm sure he did. He just didn't say anything in Scripture. Because I'm sure, as we're going to discuss this morning, I'm sure he faced some things that he would really want some discussion about. You'll, you'll see that shortly. He doesn't say a single word in the Bible. He just trusts and obeys. Now, ladies, this is not a good time to elbow your significant other. Do you hear that? He doesn't talk. He just trusts and obeys. <laughs> Trust me. So anyways. Trust issues. We're going to look today at Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25 is going to be our main text. This is what it says. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man who did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David. The angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through this, his prophet. Look. The virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took Mary as his wife. He did not have sexual relations with her until the son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. I'm not giving this message a title called Trust Issues because I think you have some. <laughs> I mean, that's between you and God. I'm simply using it because trust is not only an essential part of the Christian faith, but it is the heart of the Christmas story surrounding Jesus' arrival on earth. Trust is the big key here. So what is trust? Trust. First one, trust is living out our full acceptance of God's promises day by day. That's fully trusting, right? It's living out our full acceptance that we truly believe that what God says is fantastic enough for me, right? 
Second thing, that trust isn't, it isn't exactly the same as faith. Because a lot of times we put faith and trust in the same category. Faith is a gift from God. But rather, trusting is what we do because of the faith we've been given. Right? If I have faith, then now I have the ability to trust. Because if I believe in something, I'm going to trust it now. Because it has made himself evident in my life. And maybe that trust hasn't been established in your life. And that's okay. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Last thing that trust is, is believing in the promises of God in all circumstances, even in those where the evidence seems to be to the contrary. That's an easy one, right? Trust is a believing that something is going to happen even before you see it come to pass. That's a frightening place to be sometimes. You ever been there? All the time. Right? I heard one guy said, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> so this morning, we're going to take a look at Joseph and the trust that he had to walk in in order for this prophecy to be fulfilled. So the th I'm going to look at three things that Joseph had trust in today. The first thing we're going to look at is that Joseph trust the method Joseph trusted the method. But I said, well, what do you mean by method? Well, uh, I don't know about you, but I like music a lot. Um, Mark is here, my, my hip-hop brother. We frequent rap concerts together. You're looking at me saying, that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> it does not make sense. I love hip-hop. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. The looks I get when I'm driving down the street with my music cranked, they're like, he got issues. <laughs> Something's not right. I'm a white Canadian living in California, and I love hip-hop. <laughs> What's up, Anomaly? <laughs> but there was a song that came out quite a few years ago by a group called For Him, and it was called A Strange Way to Save the World. Anybody ever heard that song? If you've never heard it, go listen to it, because it's really, really old. But it's really, really good. It's kind of like along that Mary Did You Know type of vibe. Uh, I'm going to read you just a little bit of the lyrics because that's about as poetic as I get. But the song is totally written from Joseph's perspective. Which was cool because nobody, they had Mary Did You Know and now we have a strange way to save the world. Which makes perfect sense. So this is what it says. It says, I've, I'm sure he must have been surprised at where this road had taken him. Because never in a million lives would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. And standing at the major, he saw with his own eyes the message from the angel come to life. And Joseph said, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? And why here inside this stable filled with hay? And why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. Isn't that crazy? When you think about the Christmas story, it makes zero sense. I mean, if we think about the way Jesus should have shown up the way that he deserved, it would have been like the clouds parted and, oh, chariots of fire, and like, hey, I'm arrived. No, he showed up with a wham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that exudes power. Now, I know there's those times in the middle of the night when you hear that cry. That's a powerful cry. Those of you with babies. That's a true story. Here's the thing. Joseph trusted the method because he was about to take part in something really, really special. But he was also about to take part in something that was historically significant historically accurate. And there was a lot to take in as we read, <laughs> read in the scripture. He got a surprise that he has a pregnant fiance now. And he's still trying to retrace his steps. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> I 
Because, I mean, seriously, what, what's your first, what would be your first reaction to that? Hey, hi, oh, I had a great day at work today. By the way, pregnant. <laughs> like, uh, I'm going to have to take a seat <laughs> or a bed. Then he, has, he's, he gets a visit and has a conversation with an angel. It just keeps compounding. I don't know. I, it would be awesome. Being told that you're going to be the earthly father to the Son of God. No pressure. <laughs> Hold on tight, buddy. And then there's another chat that comes up with an angel later on about some relocations that are going to happen. But all because God had the method was in place. Right? Because see, if you look at Joseph, he probably had his life all planned out. His marriage and his vocation were all prearranged, so he thought, man, I got this. We're going to make this happen. I'm on top of things. And then his world came crashing down because his bride-to-be was carrying a child. And that is <laughs> tremendously awkward. But we know the Bible says that Joseph was a man of integrity. The Bible says, in my translation, that he was a good man. Now, I don't, we downplay that word good a lot. Because in Scripture, if you go back to the roots, good means way more than just good. Like, if you go to in and out did you have a burger? Yeah, it was good. It was good. I saw that movie. It was good. I listened to the, A Strange Way to Save the World. It was good. But good here is dakaios. I think that's right. I may have misrendered. Dakaios. Upright, blameless, righteous, and conforming to God's laws and man. So it's way more than just good. It's like blameless and righteous. And this is the type of reputation that Joseph had, which I'll take that. I wouldn't mind that rep, you know? I'll take it. But I'm sure even in the midst of his, his man of integrityness, can I say that? I'm sure the look on his face when he received the news from his spouse uh, didn't feel like much integrity at that moment. That would be one of those awkward conversations. But my Bible says this. It says Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and depend not on your own understanding, but seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Now, mind you, Joseph's in a place where the Messiah is just showing up. But the promises of God are forever. He walked with God. He trusted God. He knew God was in control, but still seeing our humanness, sometimes that can be a hard step for us, right? He probably felt like his plans were done. Like this is like, okay, I had this all laid out, and now I don't. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. At that moment, Joseph probably wasn't thinking, uh, my plans have no hope and future. I think they've turned to disaster. Here's the thing about Joseph. He trusted the method so much that, man, because in those days, when you were engaged, with you, when you were betrothed to be married, you were, if you were to break it off, it was basically significant as a divorce. It was like, it was a big deal. But also public shame came with that because, you know, people, you know, <laughs> they do this. And there was no social media back then. So, you know, they'd have to rip you in the street. <laughs> they couldn't just do it online. <laughs> you know, because we're, we're very manly people like that. We really, you know, get face to face. I'll show them. <laughs> it's not the way we do it. I'm sure that hurt my fingers. But see, even in the midst of the situation, when push came to shove, Joseph's desire was to honor Mary. Even in the midst of the chaos, even in the midst of the news, 
his first priority was to make sure she wasn't shamed or ridiculed or humiliated. So he was willing to break it off quietly and not put that on her. That is a man of honor. But this is before he gets a visit. But then in that point, the angel shows up. The angel told them that God had placed his son inside Mary and that he needed to stay with her. Now this is one of those things where she told him that and he's like, "Mm mm-hmm, good one. If somebody said that today, we would lock them up. I was conceived by the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Security. (laughs) Take pumpkin away. You know? But there was a lot of trust involved here. Amazing trust. I couldn't even imagine what, what he was facing. The thing that was respectful about Joseph, too, and the angel told him to do this. He says, you will not, you will take her as your wife. But Joseph also agreed that I will not have relations with her until the baby is born. And a lot of us probably think, okay, well, that makes sense. But then I started thinking about it when I was doing this, and I'm like, man, there are things that God will bring about in your life, whether they are desires or they are callings or things that he has planned for you. It takes us to trust him first before those things come to fruition. Because, see, trust is all about relationship. If our relationship with God isn't where it should be, then, man, we have a hard time trusting him. We have a hard time trusting maybe people that we see. How easy is it to trust something that we can't see? And that's a struggle that people have all the time. Well, I can't see him. I, used to, I heard a preacher once, and they said, well, have you ever seen God? And he said, no. And they said, well, yeah, I've seen the wind. You haven't seen the wind. You've seen the effects of the wind. But you've never seen the wind. And that's the amazing mystery of God is that we don't see him, but we know he's present because we've seen his effects on us and our loved ones and our families and in our church family. We've seen him work. So this is where this trust from Joseph is coming from. He's like, okay, this is what Mary said. Now this ginormous angel shows up and says, hey, remember what she said? truth. Now Joseph has to take a second look at this conversation because now he's getting confirmation that what she said was true. Sometimes we need to give our significant others the same courtesy. Mary and Joseph are essential elements in bringing the Christmas story to life. Their trust has been on display for centuries. We've read about their trust for years and years and years. And every year it's in the same Christmas story. But in doing this series, it's making me take a look at the Christmas story a completely different way. We, we all talk about, you know, the shepherds and the angels and the tree and a dude in a red suit. And we all talk about these things. But man, when you come to the heart of what Christmas is, it's all about attributes that bring us closer to him. That's why I love this time of year because it's so simple yet it's so profound and powerful. And this is the trust that we have to live with, we should have in our lives today. See, our situations aren't the same as Mary and Joseph's because if they were, that's weird. Our situations aren't the same but our attitudes should be. We should always look to the Savior, right? We should always look to him. doesn't matter what our situations are because situations are different between everybody in this room, but we all trust in one God, and he's big enough to handle them all. Amen? We need to trust God's methods even if they don't make sense. That's always easy to do. 
although we may never see the full picture of what, he, what he's doing, we, already know, we always know that he knows what he's doing. Because sometimes we're the jacked up ones. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what we're doing half the time. I thank God that he knows what he's doing. So we have to trust the method. Second thing that Joseph had to trust was Mary. How weird is that? It made a point in my sermon. You have to trust your spouse. Hmm. See, Joseph had a conflict raging inside of him. Whether he believed the story or not, others weren't going to. Other people were going to talk. Other people were going to say things because this was a serious situation. Like being called unfaithful to your spouse not only like really humiliated your family, it was punishable by death in some places. It was taken extremely seriously. What would people say or think about them? Because a lot of times we think, you know, sticks and stones, my words will never hurt me. Mm -hmm. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We've heard that, what, 74,000 times. And someday we'll even get it. And I put myself in Joseph's shoes for a moment. Can I be transparent with everybody for a second? I've been on the receiving end of being told that your wife is having an affair. I've been on the receiving end of that. And I tell you what, it's not fun. And you start to to second guess everything about yourself, about man, am I worth it? What's wrong with me? A lot of things start running through your mind. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm relating to Joseph in this because he's like, okay, this is weird. Can I tell you something, though? That trust in God is vital in every, every situation. This is a result of trust in God. You're going to make me cry now. <laughs> I wasn't going to cry in my notes. <laughs> it's not even in there. <laughs> Stuff happens in our lives, and if we decide to embrace those things that go wrong, and then we make that our life, we make that our identity, it's really, really hard to trust ever again because we now put our identity in what has been but God gave me a brand new perspective he moved me to a different country to be with someone that I needed to trust God with and it was besides Jesus the best decision I've ever made so thank you That wasn't in the notes either. (laughs) The heck with the notes. Wait, I worked hard on this. Now I'm seeing double. With glasses and contact lenses made of tears. Here's the thing about Joseph. Joseph was both a godly man and a gracious man. Whatever he, deci- whatever he decided to do, whether it was to bow out of the relationship or pursue it, would be done with both godly wisdom and compassion for Mary. She always, he had her best interest at heart. What was the key here? How could he trust Mary? Because he was open to the Lord's direction. He heard the angel, and instead of jumping to a conclusion out of emotion... He stood back, and when it said in the scripture that he thought about it, he contemplated it, he was praying about it. He was going before the Lord on the right course of action to take. 
See, he realized that even though he was praying for this, Joseph didn't require the proof of it. His prayers didn't require proof. His prayers required trust. The proof was going to come because when God says he's going to do something, <gasps> shocker, he's going to do it. Spoiler alert. He's going to make it happen. But we need to trust him completely. And that's sometimes a hard thing to do. Now some people, <laughs> I, was, I was doing some research and studying on this. And one guy, I don't even know, I didn't even write down his name because I was slapping my forehead. But he thought that the angel in this instance was a coping mechanism that was inspired by wishful thinking, hoping to make himself feel better. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, buddy. Whatever you got to do to eliminate God out of the equation. It was an angel. We know it because if we believe this is true, because here at Life Church we are people of the word, we believe this to be true. And when you think about it, every marriage is a relationship of trust. It could be a friendship. Because we're not going to hang out with people we don't trust. If you're hanging out with people and you're looking over your shoulder, are they saying something about me? Do this. And find people that are going to build you up and lift you up. And find people that are like-minded that want to go where you want to go. It's hard to soar like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. <laughs> Just saying. Because see, when a, man, when, a, when a man and a woman stand at the altar and they exchange vows for the rest of their lives, for one another, they believe it. When we hear, till death do us part, for better or worse, we believe it. Right? Because we believe it, we make these promises to each other for a lifelong commitment. Trust in each other is an essential foundation for a good marriage, and it will grow as the years come to pass. Trust builds trust. Oh, <laughs> that is a good point. I, I'm going to rewind a little bit to the crying moment. She wasn't the one who had the affair. <laughs> Thought I had to clear that up for you. It was clear in my brain because I lived it. So I'm like, y'all get it. No. <laughs> I'm done. Let's pray. <laughs> Pastor Tim's going to come and wrap us up. Did it just get warmer in here? <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Can we rewind a little bit? <laughs> dip, 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 dip. All right. Yes, the affair, the, no, I didn't have it. The affair that was had on me was from a woman that I previously married up in Canada. That happened. She went her own way. I moved here, and I married Deborah some, some years later. Hallelujah, Hallelujah is right. So for clarity, I trusted God in the midst of everything that happened to me, and this is what he provided me with. <laughs> well, that went south real quick, didn't it? Good times. Which is a good point here. Trust does put us at our husband's or wife's mercy. Right? Thank you for that point of clarity. That's valid. Am I the same color as this shirt? Holy moly. <laughs> Suppose we can't edit that out, can we? That's a major faux pas. 
Oh, that's funny. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> right? Let's go here. Oh, that's good. <laughs> when we put ourselves at the mercy of others, sometimes we get hurt. Right? Sometimes it can lead to that, those moments. But you know, in those moments, God takes those moments, like in the book of James says, the testing of your faith develops perseverance. The things that we go through are meant, are meant to destroy us. They're intended to build us up. The thing that I went through my, with my ex up in Canada was not intended, well, the enemy intended it to destroy me, but my God's bigger than his plans. And so when God said, no, that's not what I have for you in this season, so here's your season, you're going to trust me. And I did trust him, and it took some time because God will make you wait, but he's never late. He'll make you uncomfortable. He'll stretch you. But he's never, ever late. The only time that he's late is when we put him on our agenda. And he's just waiting, uh, still waiting for that trust thing. Still waiting for that to be sacrificed so I can move in. Okay? Because what choice do we have? Without trust, there could be no relationship. We ask God for the grace to keep trusting and that we believe that God will use our trust to increase the trust for both. We can't say, well, relationship's 50-50. Nah, that's a discount store. <laughs> you know, that's dollar mania right there. That's dollar store mentality. It's 100-100. We're in it together for the long haul, period. End of story. Right? And that requires trust. And I'm sure this is what Joseph was dealing, on, de- dealing with early on. Because he was looking for the trust in something that was bigger than him. Because his situation just got big. Right? The angel was sent to reestablish the trust in Joseph's heart for Mary and God's methods. And to trust in God for the amazing things that he would do in and through them. We've kind of been working on these words, in and through. In and through. Let that be your motto, in and through. What's God want to do in me? What's he going to do through me? In and through. Put it on your mirror. It's cool. Put it on the back of your car. People, what's that? (gasps) Then you have to have a conversation. So Joseph had to trust the method. He had to trust Mary. Last thing he needed to trust was the messenger. Well, I've heard the thing, don't shoot the messenger. Sometimes, okay, go ahead. But not literally. (laughs) That's one of these things. I'm not promoting a felony for everybody online. Who's the messenger in the story? Obviously, it's the angel that shows up, right? But It's God showing up and saying, hey, this is what I got in store for you. This is what I got going on. See, God honored Joseph's integrity by entrusting him with a great responsibility. Isn't that cool? How easy would it be to entrust your children to somebody else? Hi, Joseph, this is God. I'm sending my one and only son to you. Take care of him. Uh, that's the most extreme adoption ever. <laughs> right? What are you doing? Huh? And Joseph wasn't, he wasn't, like he said, my kid's the savior. <laughs> what did your honor roll student do today? <laughs> he had a sticker on the back of his camel. <laughs> <laughs> my kid's going to walk on water. What's your going to do? Play football? Mm-hmm. Okay. Imagine God looking down and choosing a man to raise his own son. I have a son. 
And I think about, man, I don't want anybody else raising my son because that's my boy. And people who know my son know that's my boy. <laughs> I apologize sometimes. <laughs> the apple doth fart fall far from the tree. The cool thing here is that Joseph had God's trust. That's an amazing accomplishment. That jo God could look at Joseph and say, man, I trust you. Here's my kid. They call him Emmanuel, God with us. The reason why this is significant, have you ever looked, listened, God with us? Yeah, he's showing up. But this is God showing up in an entirely different way. God is showing up in human form. Never been done. But here he is. Coming with the simplicity of a birth from a human mother and saving the world. This part of their day truly made it historical. And why was he able to trust the messenger? He was a humble man. He had humility. And he was available whenever needed, willing to endure hardship and disappointment, which is evident. He endured a lot. And he was probably looking forward to fathering his own kid, having his own child. Now he's being faced to be the stepfather to a child that's not his own. So a lot of things, I'm sure, is going through his mind, right? And in his heart. But man, he was, he was trusted with God's care every step of the way. He didn't have any parenting books on how to take care of the Son of God. There was no manual for that. He had to trust God. Do you see a theme here? He had faith, which led to the trust and compassion that he needed. When the angel appeared to Joseph and told him to trust Mary, the angel also told Joseph that, the name, that he should be called Jesus. It's not by accident that this name just, oh, that's a nice name. No, it was given directive. This is what your name is going to be. See, having a vision and a dream from God was a sign of God's approval. It was a sign that, man, Joseph is legit. He's going to pull this off, and he's going to do amazing because I trust him. Joseph simply trusted because he believed what God said, not what the situation was. Something, sometimes hearing God isn't easy. Trusting the messenger is usually easier than trusting the message. Because we could say we trust God, we believe God, we have faith in God, but when God says, I want you to do this, you're like, ah, I'll pray about that. I'm telling you to do it. <laughs> I'll go seek your face about what you're telling me to do, God. <laughs> it's like the disciples all over again. It really is. What's going on? Trust the method that he is using to bring you out of what you're going through. I dare you to give God a chance in your life and what you've been doing isn't working, then the creator of the universe deserves a shot. Because a lot of times we think, yeah, we're fine. We use that fine word, fine word. That's the new F word in the church. <laughs> fine. I'm fine. When your spouse says, I'm fine, she's not. <laughs> right? How are you doing? Fine. Mm. <laughs> and you start retracing your steps. What did I do? All the husbands are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So as I start to wrap up this morning, what about you this morning? What are our trust issues? What are our trust issues? Is it with God? Because a lot of times we like to blame God, even though it's not God. God's trying to work. Maybe it's your spouse, a family member, co-worker, a friend, or maybe it's yourself.
Trust the method that he is using to bring you through. And as we wrap up today, we're going to do something that we like to do here. We, some people will call it a tradition. I just call it a powerful act of worship. And we're going to serve communion this morning. But before we do, the ushers are going to get ready to come and hand that out to us. If you're here this morning and you haven't been trusting God with your whole life, man, this season is such an incredible place to start. But the cool thing is, is that it doesn't stop on December 26th. It's a lifelong process. And I can tell you that the benefits (laughs) far outweigh anything else. Maybe you haven't given your life to Jesus And you've decided that this amazing season is the perfect time to put your trust in the King of Kings. As we wrap up today, they're going to be serving communion. And take this time as we're serving communion this morning. Let this be a declaration of your worship and your trust in the Savior that loved you so much that he came and he broke his body and he shed his blood for each and every one of you. The manger is only the beginning. But what he did to save you, it's beyond words. But he loves you so much that he came and did that for you. I love it. As you're getting the emblems this morning, feel free to just, I'm not going to give you like a certain time to partake. Just reflect on the Lord this morning. And just partake of it whenever you're ready. But really consider Am I fully trusting him this morning in everything? Do I limit my trust based on what I see? God, that you would help us take the blinders off and see what you have for us, Father. That you, Father, would be the center of our passion, would be the center of our trust, the center of our faith, God. Jesus, we love you so much. We thank you for coming to this earth in the simplicity of a baby. Because in reality, it is a strange way to save the world. That in all the years of silence leading up to this, some 400 years of silence, nobody heard from the Lord. And it was broken by the cry of a baby. Father, we celebrate your arrival. We celebrate your love and your grace and your mercy that you were sent here for us. To save us. And that is the best gift that we could ever ask for. So we thank you, Lord. everybody's eyes are closed real quick. If there's anybody here that you have you've just never put your trust and your faith in Jesus and you're like, man, this is the day. I want to give my life to Jesus because, man, I'm, I don't like where I'm going. If that's you this morning, everybody's eyes are closed. Will you just lift up a hand and say, man, this is my, this is my day to trust God because I've trusted myself for way too long. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Anyone else? 
if you raised your hand and responded, when we're done with service, could you do something bold and really courageous for me? I'm going to have a group of amazing people that are going to be over here in the ministry room, my left, your right. Would you take the steps and go and talk with some people in there? They want to pray with you, they want to encourage you, and they want to help you on this journey. Whatever they need to do to help you, man, we're in it because we all belong. Amen? Amen. Let's pray one more time. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for these examples in your word of how we should live. We thank you for blind trust. We thank you for a trust, Father, that trusts you no matter what. That no matter what our situation is, we put you first. We thank you, God, and we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you heard something great this morning, if God spoke to your heart, can you give him thanks this morning? Give him worship and praise. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God.